So thank you very much, everyone, for joining FORCE 2021 conference. It's been a very, very exciting experience to hear from all of you from all around the world. My name is Osman al -Dadiri. I'm the conference chair, FORCE 2021 conference chair. And it is my pleasure to welcome you, as well as the, the, the rest of the organizing committee to this final session of the conference. Uh, I would like to start by thanking our incredible organizing committee members who have put uh, hours and hours of effort into creating uh, this very welcoming space for everyone so that we had so many speakers and so many participants from all around the world. Uh, thank you very much for, for our incredible organizing committee. Uh, these are some of the names of the organizing committee members. Uh, I'd also like uh, to shout out to John Shidaki, um, who's the, uh, the chair of FORCE uh, 11 or, uh, board of directors who's not here today. So thank you very much for all of the organizing committee members who are here with all of us uh, throughout the past few days. This is a map that shows where the organizing committee members come from. So we were a pretty diverse group of organizing committee members who helped bring so many speakers from all around the world. And we were very, very, very happy to have more than 150 speakers from over 33 countries all around the globe. So this green map over here shows where our speakers and community presenters come from. I would also like to thank our sponsors for creating uh, the opportunity for us to have this conference as a free conference, registration free conference. Uh, so we were able to have over 1200 uh, participants in this conference. Uh, I'm very proud to share this map with you. This is a map where uh, to show where our participation come from, where our participants come from from all around the globe. So we have participants from all over the globe, from all the continents, and we were very, very happy uh, to have actually achieved uh, the theme of this conference, which is joining forces to advance the future of scholarly communications. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who joined us at this conference. Uh, thank you very much again for our organizing committee members and our sponsors. Uh, Force 11 is a community of interested individuals who come from all around the globe working on issues. So if you're still not a member of Force 11, go to force11.org and register as a member. It's a registration free membership. Uh, thank you very much for joining Force 2021 and hope to see you all at Force 2022. I'll hand over to Adam now for the opening ceremony, for the opening awards, for the open publishing wow. awards. Excellent. Thanks, Osman. And uh, yeah. Very nice to see you. And it sounds like um, Force 11, it looks like that have been real success this year. Successful migration to online, I know that's difficult. Um, so yeah, congratulations. Um, so I will um, keep it brief. We have a few people to thank um, for this um, Open Publishing Awards. Um, we, we started the awards uh, 2019 was the first time that we did it. And we put it together very fast. Um, and we expected a handful of, um, of uh, nominations and we got uh, over 200 and this year, uh, two years later, uh, we have about 300 or so um, and really high quality nominations. Um, so we're really very happy at the sort of the level of interest and the, the whole point of these um, awards is to provide a platform to celebrate really interesting um, pr uh, projects um, uh, within the open publishing space. So uh, I'm just actually also going to share my screen if I can. Um, I'll share this. So if you can see this, okay. Um, this is a, a list of all the judges that we can that we have for this year, um, and that's um, that's uh, our first uh, thanks. There's quite a number of um, judges. What what happened last time is that we had a smaller number of judges and we we're overwhelmed with nominations. So we, uh, we needed to get uh, more folks online and, and uh, we have a very healthy list of people from all over the world and um, from a lot of different disciplines and backgrounds. So um, yeah, thank you very much. You can find this at, actually at um, Open Publishing Awards. You can find the full list of uh, judges for this year. Um, some of them are coming back, some new folks. Um, and uh, yeah, we um, healthy, healthy, diverse list. So um, really appreciative to everybody for the time that they spent um, looking at the nominations. Um, and also uh, just to say, we the nomination, the judging committee has come from a broad spectrum of publishing. So that um, it's not just scholarly communications. We're sitting within a scholarly communications uh, context at the moment. Obviously, part of Force Eleven, but um, the open publishing. Awards is bigger than that. Um, so 
uh, to include, you know, publishing of all types. So we really reached out to a lot of people that not just from skull cons, but from a broader range um, of disciplines. Um, and also to say thank you to our sponsors, um, Cloud 68 longtime partners, um, who they do all the hosting uh, for Coco um, products and um, all of our internal systems. And um, we love working with them. And uh, they hosted the site and um, everything for the awards. So very appreciative to them. But also Crossref and OSPA came to the party this year. Um, uh, both Ginny and Claire actually reached out and just said, you know, can we help in some way? We didn't approach them. We haven't approached anyone for sponsorship. And um, we're really grateful for that. You know, that gives a real sense of um, community that, you know, when you're, when you're sitting there by yourself trying to, you know, make something happen and then someone from nowhere uh, reaches out and says, hey, we like what you're doing. Can we help? And um, Crossref and OSPO were really fantastic with this. And, yeah, deeply grateful to them as well. Um, the awards are actually founded and organized by COCO. Um, and just wanted to say that not to promote us, but just to also make clear that um, we have, we forbid ourselves from making any nominations of um, things that we make. We're active in this space as well, uh, because we don't want to be seen. We want to keep this nice and clean. Um, we're not involved in uh, reviewing of the, um, of the nominations. Uh, we do provide some advice as to how we think the awards should be shaped, you know, what, what sort of things um, should be considered in terms of whether they actually fall within the rather large umbrella of um, open publishing. But that's pretty much it. Um, and, you know, we try and also encourage the judges to have a, um, a diverse number of, um, of uh, celebrated projects in the final list. Um, so that it's, um, uh, you know, it comes from various aspects of, of the open publishing domain. Anyway, so that's, that's that. And um, yeah, um, uh, we'll also um, wish to right now to announce the awards, uh, the winners for 2021. Um, and we have some of the judges um, here to help us do that. Um, and then we're gonna follow with the performance from the Divine Div Divas. Um, uh, Divine Div Divas, uh, actually I first met as the uh, COVID girls and we um, worked with uh, Precious and the performers uh, coming from the Philippines um, to put on some performances at the Open Publishing Fest uh, last year. And, um, and uh, yeah, reached out to, um, to Precious again. Unfortunately, Precious can't make it for this particular performance, but um, did perform for this year's um, Open Publishing Fest. And the Divine Divas will Lumina um, uh, will start off the performance in about uh, at the end of the, the presentations. And uh, the Divine Divas have for me been the highlight of every event <laughs> that we've done. I love open publishing and the Divine Divas have just uh, just uh, yeah, just turned out as being the, the top of uh, of the the, the uh, list when it comes to things that we're really um, amazing about each of the events that we've put on. Um, so yeah, really happy that they're going to be involved again and do a performance for us at the end of this. And I really strongly encourage you to stay and see them perform. It's, it's really fantastic. And then one last thing is that at the end of this, we're going to, part of this, the awards is, it's not just about just sort of having awards. It's actually the, the end goal is to provide focus for all of these amazing event, uh, amazing projects. And so we really encourage you to um, tell people about the, the uh, projects that have been uh, awarded and celebrated um, and also check them out, have a, have a good look at them. But also um, we're just going to um, share a simple uh, tweet at the end of this uh, link that um, calls out each of those projects just in one tweet. Uh, we'll share the link within the chat. And then if you can um, retweet that and uh, quote tweet it and tweet the um, projects uh, directly and congratulate them. This really helps sort of provide a bit of a platform um, and shine a bit of the collective limelight on, on these projects that really are doing wonderful work. Um, so yeah, if you, could, if you could retweet that, et cetera, that would be really fantastic. Um, so um, we have um, a number of judges that are going to um, uh, help us uh, with this presentation. Um, I think we're missing um, 
Julia at this moment. So I've just, uh, you know, this is the way with uh, remote things. <laughs> so um, we we may have to make, uh, Julia's written a text for that for two um, awardees. So we may have to uh, just announce them and uh, we don't currently have the text in hand. So this is all done and very, um, the awards were only, only decided on yesterday. So um, let's see, just see how that goes. Julia may turn up. But in the meantime, I might actually just um, hand it over directly to Bhavana. Um, thank you, Bhavana, for joining us. If you could perhaps introduce yourself, um, say a little bit about yourself, and then um, and then uh, and make the announcements for the two awards that you have uh, to. Sure. Thanks, thanks, Adam. Uh, this is uh, Bhavna Minakshi, and uh, I'm from India. And the first, like, you know, it's like almost two forty-five a.m., and I chose to be back to give me <laughs> and announce these words because I'm super excited about uh, you know the breaks that came in, and uh, just to give a small introduction about me. Uh, so I'm a social tech uh, researcher in India, and uh, uh, majorly, I work on research that's more involved into taking open source and uh, for us to um, for us to everyone uh, and also more focused on the marginalized groups in India and um, and also I work on projects that that involves um, identifying gender gaps in tech and also um, and also dealing with unorganized labor sectors in India. Um, I also lead this movement called Women in Tech, uh, where it's especially framed out for women who lost their jobs and and also trying to um, get their education in, uh, in tech. So I'm super glad to be here and also contribute to open source community, specifically to Mozilla and Wikimedia. So um, I think that's that's uh, the vibe that has brought me here to um, be part of the jury panel and also to uh, announce these awards. Um, so yeah, I think like we we did, really did have very quality um, uh, applications that came in, and it was so tough for us to decide on these. Um, so do we go now to announce the awards, Adam? Okay. Cool. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super nervous the same way I know <laughs> everyone would be to hear about this. So yeah, so uh, it's my privilege to announce the award for the open publishing model category. So this award, uh, while we assessed, we, we basically had it on various parameters such as the works to be open source, community-led, uh, versatile product, and that can support collaboration in the notoriously walled garden world of academia. So this award goes to a well-designed open source solution for easy cross-platform management of literature. It works with a variety of excellent connectors that make it possible to comfortably collect a variety of information sources beyond the classic journal article and that can work with metadata embedded in websites so as to semi-automize adding new sources to a bibliography. So I'm very, very glad to announce this award for the open publishing model for, for this year 2021, which goes to Zotero. Hearty congratulations to Zotero. So Zotero has an excellent implementation of metadata extraction to feed one's bibliography. This effectively allows one to add elements with one or two clicks and bibliographic info becomes inserted into your Zotero project. Also when working with communities of scholars on a given paper, the group library feature is extremely useful to enable the whole group to collect references and sources that can be fed into a paper. So, so once again, congratulations to Zotero um, and the whole team for deserving this award uh, and the whole round of applause for them. <laughs> cool. So do you want me to go with the next as well? Yeah, thank you. That was excellent. Yes, please. Oh, great. 
Um, okay, so the next award is for the open data category. So with, we all know that you know there are a lot of open data initiatives around there, and and also you know we want to be more specific to see how particular project um, that, that came out with few semantic web and linked structures that can you know make that can be made available for scholarly communication landscape. Um, and so we found there was this particular project, which represents the open principles so well, so effectively and so adamantly. And that's how we landed to give away this award. So the open data award category for this year under open publishing awards 2021 goes to open citations. So big round of applause to open citations and uh, just a little bit about open citations so uh, open citations have open as a crucial value in the final purpose and they fully oppose the unesco's founding principles of open science uh, it also compiles with fair data principles proposed by force 11 that data should be findable accessible interoperable and reusable and with the recommendations of the I4OC that citation data is particularly to be structured, separable, and open. So this, so this particular uh, research project on open citations uh, has also been like documenting uh, individual scientific and cultural achievements and, and also uh, the free available for bibliographic citations and and also their the predominant works in science and research is what that they deserve for being this award uh, and also and also i'd like to highlight a significant comment that came from of, uh, one of the juries uh, and i would like to present it on behalf of the jury panel um, so at the time of writing this review the largest database provided by open citations contains more than 1.23 billion citations oh, that's huge <laughs> so compiling this database is a license friendly way is a feat on its own but combine that with open citations persistence their active and consistent involvement with the community and the number of works that were made possible by their effort it is clear that open citations is one of the fundamental projects in open publishing specifically in open scientific publishing so i'm very much annoyed to announce these awards for the day and uh, hearty congratulations to everyone and also for the, all those uh, who were nominated to these awards congratulations and thanks for the opportunity thank you Bhavan. that was um, <clears throat> a really fantastic um uh, presentation of awards um thank you very much we'll we'll, um, we'll move on now to um to silver um, and uh, to uh, announce uh, two awards. And I see Julia now has been promoted into the panel. Hi, Julia. Hi, Kat, who's also was part of the jury. Um, over to you, Silva. Um, thank you, Adam. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Silva. Um, I have a background on information security. Um, in the last couple of years, I've mainly worked in the field of IT governance. Um, where I have mainly been focused uh, with um, open source software and data privacy. Uh, now I'm fully engaged in a startup that I've co-founded, Cloud68, which was also mentioned earlier um, by Adam. Um, so enough about me. Um, let's get um, to the awards. Um, so the first award that I want to announce is the open source uh, open Source Software Award, which is designed for those um, projects uh, released on a free software license uh, who power open publishing and open collaboration. Uh, and this award goes to Stencilla, a web uh, platform which provides researchers with a set of tools uh, that enable seamless collaboration. Stencilla bridges the gap between reproducible documents and legacy formats, such as Word documents, 
Uh, it is built on web standards and improves machine readability and accessibility of the articles. Um, this software is, des is designed mainly for researchers. It allows the authoring of interactive data-driven publications in visual interfaces, similar to those in conventional office suites, uh, but is built from the ground up uh, for repro reproducibility. Uh, by using Stencilla Open, a researcher can share a link to a preview of their work and their collaborator could, could view this link. They can also download a reproducible Word document or Google Doc uh, to review and edit. And in this way, Stencilla allows open and transparent research to be shared more effectively between colleagues of varying workflows and technical skill levels. Uh, the jury finds this project impressive as it empowers open research and open collaboration. Uh, by making publications easier and more accessible. So uh, kudos to the team behind the project for their work and dedication. So applauses. Um, and um, the second uh, award, which I'm very happy to announce is the Lifetime Achievement Award, which this year goes to the Creative Commons uh, project. Uh, this year, turning 20, uh, Creative Commons is established as a central, universally respected nonprofit organization that creates and manages open licenses for digital artifacts. Uh, I'm sure most of you are quite familiar with the project. Um, while a big barrier to uh, lifelong learning can be the cost of resources and initiatives such as open access aim to change this, it remains important for people and organizations to know how, they, how to use their resources legally. And the Creative Commons uh, project has been crucial for us to overcome legal obstacles to the sharing of knowledge and creativity. Creative Commons licenses and its public domain tools give every person and organization in the world a free, simple and standardized way to grant copyright permissions for creative and academic works, ensure proper attribution and allow others to copy, distribute and make use of their work. Uh, so uh, the impact of Creative Commons in open access over the years has been enormous. So we'd like to celebrate this project today and express our gratitude for the impact it has brought in the past decades. So thank you. Thank you, Silva. That was uh, that was also fantastic. Um, yeah, just a, just a word on the Creative Commons um, award. Um, Kat is um, with us. Who, she was on the jury and is um, part of uh, works closely with Creative Commons. Um, but um, we were very sure to make sure that there was no conflict of interest. So there was no reviewing of um, items where there was a, a, a potential conflict. So just so that you're aware that everything was kept as clean as we can keep it. So. Um, yeah, that's um, fantastic. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Julia. My next. Hi, everyone. It's lovely to be here. My name is Julia. I'm coming to you all from Cape Town in South Africa, and I head up a uh, open publishing project called Book Dash, and we create free open licensed African storybooks for anyone to reuse, re publish, share, translate, print, distribute, anything that they want to do to increase access to, to quality children's books for, for very young children. Um, I'm sure many of us grew up loving books um, and can, can relate a lot of our thirst for knowledge um, to those early experiences. And that's what we want for everyone. So I have the honor of announcing two of the Open Content Awards and um, here we considered how central open is to the project and then also the reach and impact of the initiative. How far is the content getting out? It's great to be open, but we also want um, the content to be accessible. So first up, um, we have a project that uh, the panel thought was a great example of an open source community volunteer efforts to help anyone anywhere get the books that they wish to read on the platform of their choice and drawing from those books that are already in the public domain. 
This volunteer driven globally reaching project harnesses existing open content that um, effectively and openly effective and open document openly documented tools and standards to bring quality content from behind access barriers. So the first award is to the standard ebooks team and well done to them. They take ebooks from sources like Project Gutenberg, uh, format and typeset them using carefully designed and professional grade uh, tools and style manual. They fully proofread and correct them. They add attractive public domain covers and then they build them to create a new edition that takes advantage of state of the art e-reader and browser technology. Hundreds of contributors from around the world work together to produce these ebooks and release them for free. I've had a look at the website, I can tell you the library is extensive, so if you're looking for something, um, a work that is in the public domain, especially if the Project Gutenberg version isn't that accessible, definitely have a look at um, the standard ebooks library. They're free to download and they're um, available on various platforms uh, directly from the website. So the other really great thing about this project um, that I was very impressed by is that all of the source code of the editions is also on GitHub. Anyone can submit corrections or improvements. So not only is the content accessible, but you can also uh, check out the source code and contribute to the project as well um, and see the change history of each book. And then even over and above that, uh, their style manual and all of their ebook production tool sets are also openly available for public inspection and improvement on GitHub. And so as a fellow open publisher um, and someone that kind of fell into publishing and had to uh, learn a lot of it you know, in the job, I really appreciated the commitment um, not only to increasing accessibility of quality content, but also the time and care that it takes to documenting um, and publishing one's tools and standards, open standards, such like as the style guide. Uh, it's a really valuable contribution to open publishing, which uh, the publishing world, as we know, is uh, can be heavily guarded and very inaccessible to people that um, haven't been directly involved in, in more traditional publishing before. And I think this contribution and what it opens up for people interested in potentially self-publishing or digital publishing in general is a really amazing contribution. So that is why we uh, think the Standard eBooks team are very, very deserving winners of the Open Content Award and big congratulations to them. Then it doesn't end there because there's just so much quality open content projects, so many quality projects going on that there is a another open content award. And this one goes to a very cool project coming out of uh, the Western University in Canada. And it was born in 2008. It has since expanded to traverse four languages, English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese, and is thus reaching many geographic uh, regions and users globally. The project stems from a passion to encourage and enable researchers and educators, particularly in the humanities field, to learn a wide range of digital tools, techniques, and approaches, making them better teachers and researchers. The project I'm talking about is called Programming Historian, and it is a multilingual open access journal that publishes novice-friendly, peer-reviewed tutorials for digital skills development. The project has now published 147 lessons in four languages, and it reaches an annual audience of more than 1.6 million readers around the world, all without charging anyone any money. The project is committed to openness, tolerance, and diversity, and they're constantly working to better the needs of a wide range of learners living and working around the world. I think what stood out to the, the jury about this project is not only that openness is at the cornerstone of everything they do, and that's very obvious from their, their founding ethos, um, from open access to open source to open review. So again, spanning the full spectrum of how open can we be with, um, you know, over above just making the content open. But uh, particularly as someone who comes from the Global South, uh, I also appreciated the commitment to making the lessons, to, to always having a global audience in mind and making sure that the lessons are, um, they say that they're constantly encouraging authors of the lessons to think carefully about the reader's need um, from other cultural and linguistic backgrounds and to consider um, the needs of a global audience and not 
not create something that is very specific to um, a particular discipline or university or country uh, or anything like that. So the authors are asked to assume that their reader does not come from their country, speak their language, or share their political and religious beliefs. And it means the resultant tutorials are culturally relevant to a wide number of potential readers. And I think that that speaks to a, um, a consideration, not only of the technical skill needs of those uh, users that they're trying to reach, but also how to make the content they produce as high quality and accessible to everyone around the world as possible. It shows a real consideration of the global world, an increasingly connected world, and a commitment to sharing across borders. So the programming historian team, really huge, um, huge well done, and a, another very well-deserved open publishing award to you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, um, Julia. And also, um, Julia, it comes from Book Dash. I strongly recommend checking Book Dash out. Um, it was uh, Book Dash won an award at the last awards, um, and yeah, doing really phenomenal work. Um, so yeah, thank you, uh, Bavana Silver and, and uh, Julia. Um, I have one last award. <coughs> we, we tried to get judges to announce each of them. I'm not a judge, uh, but um, we we just uh, Cameron was not able to make it. He was he's the chair of the awards, unfortunately. So. Uh, we sort of scrambled in the last moment, so I'll announce one last award. Um, but just want to say before I do that, thank you to Cameron. He's uh, he's uh, done a remarkable job in keeping this all together and taking the burden off the judges, taking the recommendations and distilling it down to a, a you know a final list, and then listening to comments from judges about that, which has been awesome. And also, you know, massive thanks to John Shadaki as well. Uh, who's just uh, always been um, close to the awards and the Open Publishing Fest and re has really helped us a lot um, and has also helped sort of um, foster the relationship with Force 11, which is why we're here. And uh, yeah, also very grateful to John and thank you to Force 11. Um, so I have one last award. It's, um, it's in a really amazing uh, project. Um, and this is an open uh, uh, content award. It's coming from Australia. And it's called Phone in the Sphere, a Utah Anthropology. It is a, uh, an astonishing document about how different worlds come together and produce something entirely new and exciting. When I say document, actually, it's a, a multi-form um, uh, uh, project. There's a short film, uh, there's a website, there's also um, a book. Uh, they've also had gallery ex uh, exhibitions and it's a, each of these is a remix of the others. Um, so Yuta means new, and so this is a document of new anthropologies. Uh, in these um, Indigenous Australian stories, phone and sphere look closely at how mobile phones are used to create images, uh, Yolungu uh, social aesthetics, to remember and connect people with uh, each other and the land. Uh, the images and stories are really beautiful, and they challenge us to think about mobile phones as a vehicle for possible deeper connections. And I have to say, like, I saw the, um, the short film um, as, as part of this constellation of, um, um, of outputs that they've created that was presented at the Open Publishing Festival and it blew me away. I actually watched it twice. We had two screenings and um, it really made me think about, you know, how one dimensional <laughs> uh, my relationship with mobile phone, not advocating for mobile phones, <laughs> but um, how much deeper um, these stories get into connection and, and how they use mobile phones to make that connection. It's, it is really astonishing. Uh, images are beautiful and yeah, and it's, it's, it's incredible. I strongly recommend you check it out. So one of our judges um, from the jury said, an excellent visual and thought provoking project, which invites us to stop and think about something that mo most of us take for granted, shaping us in ways we cannot imagine. And it's a mobile phone and how these communities are using them. Um, we also very much appreciate the comments made by the project itself that illustrate that a uterine anthropology is not fully open and deliberately so. So there is a, um, an open access version that, you can, that is online. We have a link to it um, on the awards page. Um, but the, the project does highlight itself the difficulties in translating open as it is char characterized by the various open movements um, when it comes to documenting these stories. And these are, uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting point. And um, I think it's one that, um, you know, obviously uh, deserves to open up more conversations around this, around this idea. 
Um, yeah, so um, congratulations also to um, Phonosphere, uh, Ayuta Anthropology, really an astonishing project. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's it um, for all of the awards. Um, I'm just going to, if you just bear with me for a, one second, I have to find my, um, the, the link to the, to the tweet <laughs> that I'm just about to post out. Um, and oh, it's now been sorry, I have to re edit it. Ah, uh, the joys of doing these things online. Uh, it was uh, saved to my drafts. Um, sorry, one second. Okay, so I'm going to tweet this out and I'm going to post the link. Um, oops, just bear with me for one second. My apologies. Um, okay, here it is here, uh, and I'm going to post it to the chat. If you can, uh, so as part of celebrating this, um, these projects, as I'm saying, that, that the awards are set up as a platform for celebrating these open publishing projects, um, and you know, to shine a collective limelight on on them, um, and we hope it becomes more and more effective as that uh, with, um, over the years. Um, but if you could uh, please look at the uh, the tweet that I just put into the uh, the chat, uh, click on it and retweet. And um, if you don't want to retweet it, just um, I've included the um, the handles for each of the projects, um, and just um, select those. We haven't yet told them that they have been the recipients. Um, I'm going to email them all individually. But it'd be a really fantastic surprise if they you know get a whole lot of tweets saying, "Wow, you're amazing! Love what you do." Um, we all know that it can be lonely at times working in open publishing <laughs> and uh, getting this sort of community support and endorsement and recognition is very valuable from an emotional point of view. And then we hope also a lot of you out there have got a lot of networks and connections and resources and possible uh, opportunities that you might see these projects dig down deeper into them and then that might uh, cause other uh, collaborations or possibilities for them. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, oh, I think I just posted it to the wrong channel, did I? Just, oh yeah, sorry, my fault. I'll just send it to all panelists and attendees. Um, there. Um, so hopefully you can see it now, right? Um, great. Um, uh, can someone just validate that they see that tweet in the, in the general attendees? Yes, great. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, so please, um, yeah. Uh, promote these projects as much as you can. Tell them that you love them. <laughs> um, thanks to all the judges. Thanks for Force 11. Thanks to Osman. Um, thanks for the sponsors of the awards. Um, and um, John and Cameron, as I mentioned before, um, to making this a success and helping us build a platform to celebrate these projects. 